Hello, guys, and... Hello, guys, and welcome to today, this week's episode of the Part of Your Broadway World podcast. Today, we have... Today, we have... Oh, okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Party of Broadway World podcast. Today, we have Brooke D. Rosa, who is the composer of the Alice in Wonderland, in, which is a new musical in L.A. based on the book. So, well, please welcome, um, and she's in here now, so please welcome Brooke D. Rosa. Ah, I just saw your message. Sorry. No, you're fine. Oh, <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for you know reaching out to me, and and wanting to come on the podcast. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about th- about this musical. Sure. Um, well, it's a new retelling of Alice in Wonderland, and why do we need that, right? Um, <laughs> but. Uh, it's more of um in the style of a classic musicals like a Rodgers and Hammerstein version, um that kind of a vibe. And it's interesting because when we were reading, um when I was reading with the uh, librettist the the book Alice in Wonderland, what was interesting is that kind of every scene is it's not really a linear book, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like she comes upon all these creatures and these people, but they don't necessarily move the story forward. Mm-hmm. so we thought it would be neat to have it be kind of like a little bit of choose your own adventure where the audience can pick which way Alice goes in a couple of mm-hmm. places so it's an interactive show as well um which I think is a little bit cool and different and certainly Wonderland-ish mm-hmm. yeah definitely yeah mm-hmm. so it's like kind of like a new take with like with like how she tells her own story kind of yeah I mean it's it's pretty much the same as the book um it follows along kind of the same way and it's not really um there there's nothing super deep about it like she's not crazy or anything it's Mm -hmm. it's it's you know um but yeah it's it's just following along and um the focus Mm -hmm. obviously on Alice and it's more of a metaphor I think for growing up in our version and um, knowing that you can still kind of keep those things that you love from childhood and a sense of wonder about the world, even when you're old. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And so, like, the in like obviously, it, it's also a Walt Disney movie too. Yes. Um. Does do you have some aspects of that in there too, or is it just mainly the book? Um. Well, the book, I mean, the Disney movie shares a lot of stuff with the book. Right. So, um, and most adaptations kind of, I mean, they're pretty much pretty standard things. They're in everything that we have as well, with like the Mad Hatter and the White Rabbit and the Queen of Hearts and all that mm-hmm. stuff. All that good stuff is in there. Mm-hmm. But you- um, yeah, if you're a fan of the movie, you'll for sure like this. Um, if you're a fan of the book, you'll like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's got a couple extra scenes that the Disney one doesn't have. Like we have the pepper scene that they took out, um, and we have a, uh, an insect scene that is not in the Disney one either. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And did you have any like knowledge of Alice in Wonderland before any of this? Like, did like at, like as a kid, did did you watch the the Walt well, the Disney version? Yes, I mean, I've actually seen quite a few versions of Alice. There was the Disney one. I know there was a miniseries. I want to say Martin Short was in it. There was a a miniseries that Sci-Fi did in around 2010. There have been so many adaptations that I've seen of this. Of course, the Tim Burton one Mm -hmm. also. Um, uh, And I think they all kind of informed it. Alice in Wonderland was never really my favorite story growing up, but... Mm -hmm. Now that I do stuff for the stage, I thought 
it would be a really cool story to have on stage since it is kind of mm. really whimsical and colorful and everything can be really bright and fun. And one of the cool things about our production is we have an LED wall in the theater. So we have custom animation, um, which I think is pretty neat looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of it's in the trailer. I'll have to send it to you. We just posted it um, today. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, because I that that was actually my next question is like because it, it it's got to be really fun to be because like that story is kind of kooky in its own way with like everything yeah. that happens to her, to mm -hmm. Alice, and like happens in that world. So it's got to be really really fun to like play with that. Yeah, it's really fun, and what what I think is actually kind of great, um, being on the production side of things, is a lot of a lot of it doesn't necessarily have to make sense <laughs> in any kind of a way. It's kind of how it is in the book. I mean, these things happen this way, and mm -hmm. um, they're not really explained, and they're not really glossed over. And kind of the audience has seen all these other iterations where they just accept that, oh yes, this is this is the thing. Um, so. You know, yeah, it's it's a it's a fun challenge. Also, having to do things like making her get big and small, and how are we mm. going to do that? And um, so that's been it's been a lot of fun so far. Mm. Mm, yeah, because I I because I, I talked to a lot of my of my Disney friends, and they were like it's kind of like you're watching it, but like it feels like you're on drugs because it's so weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's really weird, and the story it. Yeah, it, it's just, I think it's also because it's kind of like that non-linear story. I think the Disney one makes it a little more linear, but it's mm -hmm. not like, oh, here's the hero and here's the problem and I have to get to this. So it's sort of like this weird thing where you're just kind of going through it with her <laughs> and like experiencing things and it's not really necessarily... I mean, I think in some ways everything is making her grow and make her making her realize things about herself, but I don't think it's... Mm -hmm. as literal as most other stories like you're saying right right exactly and like what was like that process of like creating this too I wanted to ask um it's been a really long process actually um I the I decided to work with a librettist her name is Paige Lanert mm -hmm. um I had mentioned doing this story and I know a lot of people just hate doing Alice in Wonderland on stage because mm -hmm. of all the problematic things like oh how are we going to make her grow big and grow small and mm -hmm. how are you going to make a cat vanish and that kind of stuff but um I just think it's it's cool and we thought okay if so if it's a non-linear story and we can make it a little bit of choose your own adventure how would we write this and I think I started writing some of it in 2016 so it's been a really long time it was finished in 2018 um it was originally going to be with a, a company overseas mm -hmm. and they just weren't able to kind of get the funding and everything together the resources so and then of course the pandemic hit and um basically I think in 2022 after I've been sitting for a really long time I said I think I'm going to just try to essentially self-produce this because it's just sitting around in a drawer <laughs> yeah 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 true so. <laughs> um and after because it's because it's only here for like the sixth and the seventh right correct? yeah it's only two shows um it's actually there's actually one more show but it's closed to the public it's just for uh children school children in the area mm -hmm. and the theater is actually going to bring them in um mm -hmm. from all over so they can see it and uh, so that should be fun too mm -hmm. so like is there a possibility and like you know i don't know if you guys even thought about that but like is there a possibility that it could go to like places like New York and, and stuff yes like yes I mean I, I would like to take it to New York as soon as mm -hmm. possible so yeah. um it, actually the theater here I was looking at it I think it would qualify as Broadway if it was in New York because it's 1238 seats mm -hmm. so it's a pretty big theater um yeah that's yeah. the plan maybe take yeah. it off Broadway or something Mm -hmm. yeah right right exactly mm -hmm. because a lot of shows I hear do actually end up going to Broadway from LA because it's just like a big city and you know a lot of people see it so like a lot of producers see it and are like okay well since it's done really good here in this big city we'll just take it to New York because that's also might do very well <laughs> 
Yeah, it's going to be, it's kind of hard to tell because it's such a short run here, but I, yeah. I think that um, what's great about Alice in Wonderland, which is different from like my original musicals that I've written, is that it's a known story. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot easier to promote. And also what's great about Alice in Wonderland is it's essentially for all ages. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not just having, you know, people 16 and up or 13 and up or whatever it is. You can have mm -hmm. uh, people bring their families, especially to like a matinee. Um, and that's something that they can do together so you have kind of this whole other market that I'm not used to um tapping into right um and then like I wanted to get back to like the like the staging and stuff too it's like how did you guys like how how did how did that work like how how did you like think of ways to do that staging like be, be, because like you mentioned earlier there's like ways to like 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 she shrinks and then she like rows and everything and then the cat and then the Cheshire cat disappears like did how did you find a way to master that well I mean <laughs> we're actually still working some of it out but but basically the the team is great we have um uh, Bob Wasson he does he mm -hmm. the special effects and he's done the LED um backgrounds he has an artist that's doing them but he's actually done a lot of things for Disney. So mm -hmm. uh, he has a lot of good ideas and some stuff is just really, will probably look a lot cooler on stage than it actually is backstage. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, motorizing things in some cases. Um, what's cool about Alice, since we have the big LED wall is we can force perspective really easily by, mm -hmm you know changing it on that plus having her come something like downstage or mm -hmm. closer to the audience it just it'll look um pretty drastic right whereas in something like film you might really be able to do it very easily in vfx mm -hmm. or something like that it is still live here but there there are fun creative ways and we're, we're just playing with a lot of stuff a lot of there's some ideas that we have from like things like into the woods and mm -hmm. just watching a lot of different kinds of um, musicals and shows and seeing what works speaking of different Broadway shows I wanted to ask because uh, because obviously you're doing this this musical and you know you're involved in, the, in that in the musical the, the musical theater industry so I'm, I want to ask what is your favorite Broadway show Oh, easy. Hands down, Phantom of the Opera. Family of the Opera. <laughs> Hands down. I'm so sad. I'm so sad that it, it it closed. Me too. I don't think it should have. It was such a I staple. I feel like I don't even want to go to New York anymore. because like No. It, oh, I felt that way with with um, with with Phantom, but also with, with Jack and Little Pill when that closed. Oh, I, yeah. I was like, I don't want to come anymore. I'm done. <laughs> Jungle uh, yeah. Pill was the only way I wanted to go, and now that that's closed, I'm done. Mm -mm. I know. I it's it's so sad, especially since it, it had been such a long running show and such a kind of. I don't. It, it just made me kind of sad for the industry in general. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a major like, change of. Because fan was like what thirty something years. Yeah, thirty. Yeah, and I'm I like, think. and I'm like. Why you gotta do that? You like, should just keep running it. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah, they should have. They should have just kept. I know that they have to. I know from the cast members that um, a lot of the mechanical stuff in the Majestic Theater was really on its last legs, and they mm. needed to do a theater overhaul with the seats and everything first, and then also some of the way that that stuff is done. I mean, they they could very well be back. Um, but yeah, I I. I think so. I think some of it they they had to do anyway. I wish they could have just done it during the pandemic, but I guess nobody really knew at the beginning how long it was going to be. So, yeah. um, but I, I have a feeling it's going to be back pretty soon. I fingers crossed because I want to see Phantom. I mean, I've seen the, I've seen Phantom twice already, but I want to see it on Broadway. <laughs> oh, it's well, you know, because I've seen it touring a lot and on Broadway, and the direction on Broadway is just so much better. And and you can like everything is built into the stage, so yeah. the whole yeah. travel to the lair. I mean, that was the first musical I think that I ever saw or heard when I was a kid and I just thought wow what yeah. is this because it's mm -hmm. it's definitely it's like everything you want to see it's got a lot of spectacle and um mm -hmm. 
and that's kind of what I'm into yeah yeah I'm excited for Beauty and the Beast to 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 tour again oh yeah that's That's, gonna be great yeah that's a good one too Um, I remember when that opened dating myself here but yeah (laughs) when that opened too um that's it that's another I love the kind of um I mean I don't know I like rock musicals and I like a lot of the pop musicals too but I really Mm -hmm. have this soft spot for kind of that older sound Mm -hmm. um you know like my fair lady and that kind of stuff and Mm -hmm. where it's a little more weird here here in michigan we're getting that on tour in like um, another month oh how fun (laughs) yeah super fun super cool Mm -hmm. yeah we get a lot of really good stuff here um at the pantages i see a lot of shows i I even i really (laughs) i was talking to my husband we 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 have now become fans of cats somehow um because at first we were like this is just insane and it sort of went to an odd sort of reverence and now I'm kind of like I really like cats Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm like ashamed to admit it but Mm -mm. yeah I mean too I saw because cats did tour here it's weird it's It's weird weird. and I was skeptical about it because I was like cats seems kind of creepy and really scary to be honest like thinking cats I don't like that idea like (laughs) but and I was like, okay, I'll give it a chance though, because I love Andrew Roy Le- Weber. Same. And so I'll just give it a chance. I ended up loving it because it was just amazing. Yeah. I think the more I see it, the more I like it. Uh-huh. I don't know. I just think that's so, what a bold thing to do in the 80s. I mean, because it's pretty avant garde. I mean, it's, and that, that again, it's it's sort of like a story, but kind of not. It's like, all the different cat vignettes. I don't know. Just mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I guess I should have trusted him in the in the beginning because he's a genius anyway. Because of right. him, so I should have trusted right. him in the beginning. That's my fault. My fault. <laughs> no, that's on me too. <laughs> I had the same reaction. So yeah. <laughs> if I ever get him on this podcast, he's gonna be like, "You should have trusted me." <laughs> <laughs> Although, although I did, I did hear a really, fun, really hilarious story though of like he saw the cats movie and then he immediately, immediately bought a guy, uh, like a support dog because he was like, I hated that movie so much. I and heard he, that he really hated that movie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I saw all of it. I think I saw the beginning. <laughs> I saw clips and I'm like, this is terrible. I just saw no. I didn't even see clips. I saw the trailer and I was like. I'm horrified. I need therapy now. This yeah. is scary. This is scary. Yeah, I think maybe they, it would have been better if they did it like the the taping of the 1980s one yeah. that they have on uh, Broadway HD. Like if they had just kind of essentially shot the show like Hamilton style. Um, I think that might yeah. have been better. I mean, the, the CGI, <laughs> CGI thing did not. Yeah. It didn't I, work. I, yeah, I, I kind of, I'm just like, I'm kind of over it in general. And I, I yearn for the days when they didn't have it and they had to get really creative with stuff. Yeah, but. the CDI cat thing, this didn't work for Taylor or any of the other cast. Mm. And I'm just like, no, thank you. Oh no, my gosh. Thank you. I'm I forgot the- all about the movie till you mentioned it. Yeah. Well, I'm, so- I'm sorry about, about that. No, no, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, live, yeah. Re, re, relive the, the trauma now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I don't think I made it through. I either fell asleep or I turned it off, but I made it through. This is falling asleep. That's me. This is like, I'm going to fall asleep. I don't like this. Bye. <laughs> if it's a oh, movie, yeah. I hate, I'm going to be like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bed. Yeah, exactly. Same. I'm not going to stay up and watch something I don't like. No. I haven't watched the Mean Girls mo- movie yet yet either because I'm terrified of it. Because I'm terrified it's going to be sucky. <laughs> I never saw the first one. Is that weird? That's so weird to admit. It's I think so... I'm the only person in the world. I know all the references, but I've never actually seen the movie. I saw the Mean Girls tour, and I love that. I love yeah. that, that they made it into a musical. Because it should have been a musical to from the beginning. Yeah. Um, But I haven't seen the... the mean girls musical movie yet because i Mm -hmm. heard like not bad things but some bad things some good things like heard mixed reviews yeah yeah i haven't yeah i don't know anything about it i don't know if we got it out here maybe we did 
I don't know, I've been so busy with this that I just haven't even yeah. had time to go see anything. It's on digital now, so. Mm. I should check that out. I'm also obsessed with, I don't know if you watch Mischief Comedy at all. Mm-mm, they're like they're the, the play that goes wrong people. Oh. Oh, they are oh. funny. I love the, I love that 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 play. I love oh, that play. yeah. It's, I love it. I saw Peter Pan Goes Wrong. We actually went to New York to see it and Phantom before it closed. Mm-hmm. And then and then and then Peter Pan Goes Wrong came out here. It's 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 even funnier than the play that goes wrong. Mm-hmm. It's really good if you get a chance to see it. So. Did you see it with Neil Patrick ha- Neil Patrick Harris when when he was in it? I did see Neil Patrick Harris and I also saw Bradley Whitford. I saw I think I saw everybody that did it out here. I didn't get to see Ellie Kemper though. Who did I see in New York? I don't remember. I saw Neil out here. I didn't see him in New York. I don't remember who was doing it. Yeah. But yeah, it was cool. And those people are also nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm very sad that because I wanted to see Parade out in, in, in New York. I know. And it closed and I'm like. I wanted to see Parade in Hades Town, and I didn't get to see either of them because I, <laughs> when I was up there, I just kept going to Phantom. <laughs> Peter Pan goes wrong. I was you're there like, for Phantom's important, and I just alternated. <laughs> and that's what you're I like, did. You're like Phantom's more important. Like, take my money, take my money. It's closing, and I want to. I'm see. like that. I'm like exactly like that with with Disney and like with like any so sort of musical that I love. I I was like that with Jagged when I saw it on tour. I literally ran up to the um the merch stand. And I was like, "Take my money!" <laughs> no, completely. I mean, I I bought so much stuff. I had to like FedEx at home. <laughs> I had I had the Phantom blanket and the Phantom, oh God. the Phantom ornament and the Phantom hoodie and the Phantom. Stop it! No. Oh Stop no! It. I went nuts. I went nuts. Well, because it kind of made me want to be a composer. So I mm-hmm. I, I kind of think. It's investing in myself <laughs> somehow to go buy all this stuff. <laughs> That's one way to, to, to justify it, I guess. It's one it's, way to, to justify totally, it. Yeah, it's tottotally justifying it. So, uh. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. No, I have so much fandom stuff. It's pretty ridiculous. Oh, that's so, I have so many, much Disney stuff. It's ridiculous. I love Disney. I'm a huge Disney fan. Um. Well, obviously, because you're doing this, you're you're creating yeah. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Well, uh, that's that's another thing. I mean, if you think about Disney, it's kind of. I mean, it does have pretty memorable music, but I think it's less memorable than some of the other ones. So I thought, mm-hmm. okay, because there's no way you're going to write a better The Little Mermaid. <laughs> I mean, right, right, you know, right. You're not going to be able to write a better Beauty and the Beast. You're not going to be able right. to be, write a better snow white or anything but i thought alice in wonderland i was like i really do like all the music in alice in wonderland but because it is kind of a weird story there's not a lot of well no there's some pretty good songs but yeah i mean i don't know Mm -hmm. and like and i know that we're going all all over the place in this podcast but it's my podcast (laughs) there you go but i did want to get because i don't know if you heard about the whole snow white live action that they're doing oh god yeah What's your take on it? Because I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I mean, um, I didn't hate it until I think. What was it? I think it was like Rachel Zegler trashed it or something. I, I haven't really. It's not 1936 anymore. It's like, yeah, I'm going to be careful about what I say because I, I don't really know exactly what was said. So I feel weird basing something on something that I think was maybe said. But also I felt bad that um, I know there were some uh, little people that were excited to be in it too. And then yeah. they kind of got cut because of something. I don't remember. But there was a whole bunch of controversy. Um, yeah. I actually think Rachel Zegler would probably make a good Snow White. But she seems so negative about it. Every uh. single review like interview she's trashed it i'm like yeah, that's not I what you're that's... supposed to do yeah maybe yeah if you really hate it it's sort of hard for the audience to enjoy you know i don't know yeah that's pretty tacky <laughs> yeah yeah i think a lot of people would like to maybe play that role so yeah people that actually love the original 
you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. and I mean, I get that they want to make a new thing for a new time, but maybe then just call it, don't like call it Snow White's Adventures. And I, I don't know, you know, you can, they could title it differently. So it's not confusing maybe that it's mm. a separate story or mm. whatever. Um, I mean, I've heard that, I've heard like to like, they because I haven't heard anything else about Snow White so I think that they kind of scrapped it to be honest oh. I feel like they scrapped it oh did they I, yeah I just remember hearing a lot of sort of like stuff about, like a lot of people were talking about it, and then I just didn't hear anything about it so maybe I don't know because maybe they're doing some PR damage here <laughs> maybe but I don't know because it's like I remember I've seen a whole bunch of pod like not, not podcasts like a whole bunch of in, in, interviews and then I just saw nothing about it after yeah. like the last interview and i'm like did they yeah. just did they finally realize that this is a bad idea and then and they scrapped <laughs> it I'm like do or... we need all these live action remakes i don't know i mean i guess they, they're kind of fun in a way but uh yeah i don't know it was great the little mermaid was great Some... i didn't see little mermaid um beauty and the beast Heart. i saw that was that was fun yeah the i mean but... the little mermaid was great some aspects were kind of what but you know like and, and they made Atlantica look like shit, but... Oh, no. That's not <laughs> good. Yeah. I mean, it's... A, 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 I, I, you know what? I was waiting for it to come on Disney+, Plus, and I think it's already on Disney+, Plus, and I just haven't got around to watch it, but... Yeah, I mean, Lin-Manuel Miranda is genius in everything that he does, but there's... So there were just Maybe some... not the Scuttlebutt song, though. Maybe, no. Mm. Someone sent me that. I do know that, that song that that song i have so much sense. yeah i don't I yeah i don't get beat, it because he's a he's a pretty good writer i wanted to beat my head myself in the head over it over and over because that may not be his fault you know they may have uh, i don't know when you're working with directors in a big company like disney they may have said we need something like this that he just can't get out of it you know but he wrote it he's like yeah well, I mean, I, I I didn't see the movie, so maybe it moves the plot forward. I can't really say. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I yeah. Know. I'm trying to be really nice and politic. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not really the target demographic either, so. No, no, I mean, I mean, I am, but also, because I took my four-year-old, my now four-year-old niece to it and she loved it she loved the but the but the scu scuttlebutt song she loved it <laughs> see but that that's the thing you know i think that kids probably lo really like that kind of stuff and i'm just sitting like, here oh. i mean and, and then like i'm just sitting next to her just like staring at it, just like sweet death please come save me now <laughs> <laughs> my ears sweet death please just come down and save me yeah, I feel like that was probably the thing where it was a lot of bad decisions, and it's not really anybody's fault in particular. <laughs> you know, it uh, was just it was probably a lot of like all around bad decisions. I mean, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give Lynn a pass. <laughs> oh well, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to I have to say that though too because I, if I want him on my podcast, he's gonna want probably watch this and be like you talk shit about me so i'm not gonna be on your podcast yeah now now it's now it's over now, now it's, it's over, over. <laughs> no um, i think that yeah i mean i don't think he's probably but like, i mean look i mean there's like what 99 percent awesome output in one percent no yeah yeah um ha ha hamilton's great though i love hamilton mm -hmm. hamilton's great mm -hmm. and <laughs> I also heard a rumor, like, because I don't have, have have you watched it on on Disney Plus? I think I saw about half of it on Disney yeah. Plus. There's a part when John John Jonathan Groff he's 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 singing "You'll Be Back" and mm -hmm. he spits. He kept that in on purpose. Like Lynn kept that in on purpose. In that he's like, I'm keeping that in because it's so funny. I gotta check that out now. Maybe I did see it, the whole thing. I know I saw half of it, so I probably saw that because that's in the mm -hmm. first half, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. I'm like, they, I'm like, did they? Did he spit? I'm like, oh, he spit. He spit. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I like that kind of stuff that happens in live performances. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. it not, and I you know, and it, like, to not edit that part out, but, but then just to keep it as it is, it shows like what can actually happen on stage. I like oh, yeah. when, I, I like when, when, when they don't edit as much. Oh. Me too. Me too. Especially when it's um the theater stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't like, want, like a quick cuts and Yeah. You know. I mean like like waitress, that pro shot was amazing. Um did 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 you get to see that? I didn't it, I didn't know theater. that was out. Yeah, it was it's on know. um on dvd or not dvd on demand now i think really um but they did, i gotta put yeah. it on my list yeah yeah they uh did a pro shot in theaters and i saw that and i wept <laughs> i wept it's Sarah. so good when they get it right you know it's, uh yeah Sarah Bareilles made me weep. I'm like, I'm just like bawling. My eyes. I'm leaving the. I'm literally leaving the the, the theater just like in tears. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh my god. Yeah, no, she's pretty great. And I've loved theater since since I was a kid. I've always wanted to be in in the in theater, but I've never just never had the guts. And is your favorite Phantom and Jag Little Pill? yep yeah that's pretty pretty good mm -hmm. i i wanted wanted to be in jagged so bad i wanted to be in jagged so bad you could still audition i could i mean the, the tour's almost over though oh so i'm sure there'll be another one i have a a interview that i did last week and then that that podcast episode's <laughs> coming out next week uh the on the 28th and because uh, i interviewed two of the cast cast me members of the tour oh how cool so that's coming out uh, on the 28th so that's awesome that must have been a really fun day oh yeah that was yeah well i'm friends with one of them so that was easy to get his um approval of c c coming on the show because he was like nice. oh hell yeah i'm like oh cool that's awesome that's yeah. so cool Mm -hmm. um i'm trying to think if you like um one thing i've been i've become a low-key obsessed with lately is, well not lately but um <laughs> i never got to see it but spider-man turned off the dark <laughs> the whole controversy it's such a deep cut oh my god so there's a book called song of spider-man by glenn berger or berger i think he says but um it kind of chronicles the whole thing and I read it in probably a day and I think I reread it once a year and it just made me go down this rabbit hole I don't know why that came into my mind but um if you haven't read that book I highly recommend Song of Spider-Man if you like mm. musical theater stuff it's mm. really good and it's very fitting for this podcast episode that you said rabbit hole because we're talking about Alice in Wonderland absolutely <laughs> I feel like I've been saying a lot of I went down the rabbit hole on this or whatever, but mm -hmm. I mean it's pretty... fitting. It's yeah, fitting. it is fitting and it's pretty yeah. standard phrase and everyone's always saying it. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then but, yeah. but um and then and then they did the I don't know if you remember this, they did Alice in Wonderland on Broadway too. I, don't even remember I that think one. Frank Wildhorn had a show, right, called Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was more modern, but for the late '90s, early 2000s, sort mm -hmm. of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the Mad Hatter was a girl. Yep. That was like the Linda Etter role, mm -hmm. and like she was pretty much. Here's the weird thing about the, about about that the, about that production though. It's like they turned her, they turned the Hatter into like the evil v v villain too. Oh, I'm like, what? Oh no, that's kind of sad. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, you're le like 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 
she was like leading Alice in like the wrong direction, essentially. And I'm like, I don't like how you played the 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 Hatter in this. I don't know. I don't Isn't the like Queen it. of Hearts the villain? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're both the the the, the villain in this. I'm like, hmm. What? That was weird. Yeah, I don't know. I, I never got to see it, but I, I tried to like watch a bunch of stuff, but eventually I just got tired of trying to watch stuff and just uh, mm-hmm. just You're go like, back oh. to the book. Just go back to the book. Reading's easier <laughs> than it's a weird read. I mean, it's a weird read. If it didn't have pictures, <clears throat> I heard that actually when he was publishing it, nobody wanted to publish the pictures and he held out. Mm-hmm. Mm. Thank God he did, because you try to read that without the pictures, you're like, a Jabberwocky. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, because, like, you know, like you know how, like, they, they, like... Well, we know now how all that stuff looks, but... <laughs> right, but, like, you, like, you know how people say, like, you, you know, you read a book, and then, like, your brain can imagine things, but that's kind of hard in with the Alice and with Alice in Wonderland because it's like I don't know what that is so I can't picture it so yeah yeah it's a very visual um book it's a very visual show uh and I think without that kind of element I mean obviously you can use your imagination all the all the time but Mm -hmm. I like the pictures yeah Mm -hmm. and it's like speaking of the the Jabberwocky like is he is is he in that in in your show in the show too no like, no okay. um so what we decided to do is actually some of the scenes and even the disney movie are from through the looking glass mm-hmm. and uh <clears throat> and in m- most movies i think they kind of do a mishmash of the two books mm-hmm. but so we have some elements from through the looking glass and some from alice in wonderland and the the idea is to make a sequel if it's wildly successful. Um, so then there would be a Through the Looking Glass. And then mm-hmm. also Wonderland Through the Looking Glass kind of thing. Yeah. Which, I mean, they they made that into, like, they made that after the, the, yeah, the, the, the Tim live Burton action. One. Yeah, yep. the Tim Burton one. I'm like, did, did, did we need that? Or did we Well, I also, I don't think that's the book story. I don't remember it the way the Tim Burton movie was. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I was kind of like, I mean, Tim Burton's work is like amazing. Like, I love Tim Burton's work, and like Alice in Wonderland was beautifully made, but it's like it was also like a little kind of terrifying because it's like it's Tim yeah, Burton. It's Tim Burton. Yeah, yeah. I think um. I think it was cooler to see the animated film back because they like a lot of the things with perspective and stuff when you're not being like real mm-hmm. were a lot more I don't know, they worked better I think kind mm-hmm. of yeah if that makes sense you know and then when you see it's like live people with the CG stuff with the back I don't know it's mm-hmm. sort of well, it seems like they changed it. They changed in yeah in in, in like the the Tim Tim Burton one. They it is closer it to the book. I mean, I think because the, there's all the stuff with the sword and but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah. When she gets her arm scratched, is that in the book? Then I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't, but I know she didn't wear armor. I think she just kind of had the sword and fought mm-hmm. the, the Jabberwock. Uh, I'd have to reread it again. It's been a while, but but yeah, no, it's um, but it was good. It's just yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I will say though that John Johnny Depp did did make a good Mad Hatter. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, good Mad he's always going to be that that character in any Tim Burton movie too. Yeah, yeah. whatever that, that character is, it's going to be yeah. Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, obviously, obviously. I mean, he he's he's a great he's a great actor. Yeah, my favorite of his is probably Jack Sparrow, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like him as the demon barber of Fleet Street. Oh, he was good. Yeah, he was really good in Sweeney Todd. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, he was great. I actually got to see that on Broadway when it opened with um, Josh Groban and Annalie Ashford. Oh, you're lucky. I wanted to see that. Yeah, my friend took me. Um, it was really nice. It was really Cause... good. I, I liked the new, um, the staging and everything. And I actually, I, I know Josh Groban, he's not everyone's favorite, but I actually really liked him. I mean, he might not be as... Um, like big in terms of his acting style but I thought mm -hmm. he sang it really nicely and I feel like sometimes you get people on Broadway that like scream a lot I don't know I saw yeah. some people that were like kind of screaming and yeah. like acting so hard and he was just it was kind of like nice to just not be so I don't know I thought he was good yeah I mean Aaron Tavet is great as Sweeney like well not great he's good as, as Sweeney <laughs> yeah I, um, I I'm sure he is. I mean, I know he's not like the vocal range, but I heard that they were able to transpose some stuff. Yeah. Um, Sutton Foster, I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about, but okay. Yeah, she was doing. I heard some bootleg or something that somebody had up on TikTok, and I was kind of like, huh. But I don't know. It's hard to tell because people can have off days, or they could be doing a character thing, and it's sort of like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's hard to tell without like a video or being there, but. And I could just be be being biased though because I love Annalie Ashford so much. Yeah, she was really good. She was really fun. Yeah. Um, and vocally, she was pretty good too. So yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I again, I could just be biased because I love Annalie Ashford and Josh Groban so much. I mean, I grew up yeah. with Josh Groban because I used to, I watched P P Polar Express when I was a kid. So I, I, I Josh I, Groban I, was in Polar Express. Uh, he's not in it, but he 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 sang a song. He, he, oh. he a song okay yeah um that's cool i never saw Polar Express. Hmm. You i know i should i should see it it's a really good christmas movie my favorite's the muppets christmas carol <laughs> oh yeah uh you should watch my fourth what my third my yeah my fourth third or fourth um podcast because uh, i talk about that oh, i love it that's a that's a fun one I'm gonna. I have to watch the Polar Express because everyone always talks about it, makes jokes about it, and I think this is just something I have to get around to watching. I don't know why I haven't. No, but um, because we did. I did a in November. I did a Christmas episode of the podcast, and I talked about that version, and I talked about Stella Scrooge, the the twenty twenty thing that 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 they did when like the world was shut down and. And I talked about I talked about all the different versions of the Christmas Carol. Oh, that's nice because I'm writing one. Hey. Oh my god, I love the Christmas Carol. I loved it. So. I love I love the story. It's a nice redemption mm -hmm. kind yeah. of story, and it's interesting that the protagonist is a much older person. I like what they did with this with this Estelle Scrooge though. Like the Silla Scrooge, like it's a whole new take on. I haven't seen it. No. Oh, you should. It's a, it. You can find it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. You should okay. watch that too. Good one. I love that kind of stuff. Um. Yeah, like um. There's like a whole bunch of musicals too like um i loved it dear evan hansen that movie mm. that mood the movie musical was like oh really good i haven't seen the movie um but I, I would think it would translate over pretty well yeah and the actor who played um the main the, the main one um evan hansen he played evan, evan hansen in broadway so they had him do Evan Hansen in the movie Ben Platt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They well, they learned the lesson on uh, Les Mis, I guess. Yeah, Les Mis. Les... I kind of like Les Mis, though. I mean, you know, for what it was, and I know everyone bags. I I didn't think everybody was that bad. I mean, Aaron Tibet wasn't bad. I love Aaron Tibet in that one. Oh yeah, well he but he's coming from. I mean. And, you know, Hugh Jackman is experienced, but I didn't, like, hate Russell Crowe that much. I didn't hate, I don't know, I didn't, 
it's just kind of like you know it for me when you when you have people that are that famous in something it pulls me out of it like when they had yeah. star wars come out they were all unknown people and then you're kind of like oh because you don't I, really know them you know right i was surprised of with um and hathaway though I yeah she was really good that, yeah she was really good i didn't know she could sing no me either and you know yeah some some people were better than others but i think you know, everyone tried and uh, honestly it was pretty ambitious to try and record it all with them singing with piano and then like fit the orchestra and underneath mm. I'm like oh how do you even do that and mm. how hard it must have been to have like put those takes together and I just yeah. I don't know and, I mean and like I I heard too dur- I, I like I saw like in the behind the scenes roles or, or on YouTube and mm-hmm. stuff like they sang it live they didn't have like a thing that Rick like Saying, no they sing it live yes and that's recording. what made it into a movie and i'm just like i have a lot of sympathy for <laughs> you can have a real off day you can have a good performance and a bad note you know what i mean uh, yeah yeah like imagine how many takes you would have to do if like you sang a note wrong and like, you had to so go back. many yeah so many it must have been exhausting so i don't know i have i have kind of a lot of sympathy for the and plus they're not musical theater people they're used to really different approaches mm-hmm. except for i think you know samantha barks obviously has done theater mm-hmm. hugh jackman's done theater mm-hmm. aaron's done theater um but yeah you know it's it's all right has amanda seifert d- done the theater yeah i don't feel like she's done musical theater maybe she has maybe. i didn't think she was that bad no i love her oh uh, yeah i, I didn't her. think that she was yeah. it's like mama mama mia one and two are like my favorite movies yeah she, i mean she's great I, yeah. yeah I didn't everyone kind of came down on her and was like, I don't it's a hard role it's a it's 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 high I mean yeah. it gets up there so I mean I n- don't necessarily think that they should be doing a number three but they're doing a number three but <laughs> you're like the, the first two are good the first two are good I think we're beating a dead horse here <laughs> good enough yeah good enough move on yeah I feel like a lot with stuff I'm kind of like everything's getting rebooted and redone and you're like do, do we need this? Do we really need this? I feel like we just had this. We're beating the dead horse. The horse is dead. Leave yeah. it alone. Bury Are there not it. any new ideas? Oh, I should talk. I'm doing Alice in Wonderland, but <laughs> but it's always fun, and at least people know what they're getting. You know, they if you just want to kind of go and have a fun day in the theater, and mm-hmm. you just go yeah. do that. So yeah, mm-hmm. right. Um, and then like Wicked, Wicked. I'm so excited for Wicked. Oh, the movie, the two parts. Yeah, yeah. Did 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 you see the um trailer yet? For yes. That? Yeah, I, it looks I cool. Wept. I wept. <laughs> it's I been totally a long time. Wept. Everyone's been waiting for it. So yeah. I wept. I might be kicking you. I saw. I was watching the Super Bowl with my mother, and then that came on. It that 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 was like the first c- commercial that came on. As soon as I saw the green the the hat in the beginning. I just like lost it. I'm like, oh, I'm out of so commission. Funny. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be cool when that comes out. I always wish they had made one of Jekyll and Hyde, like not just the David Hasselhoff version, but like I don't think a nice... I've seen that. I don't think I've seen that version. Well, it's it's you know it's interesting, but you know he's like that's not that bad. I don't even think I've seen Je- Jekyll and Hyde. <gasps> Jekyll and Hyde's really good. I like Jekyll and Hyde. I I have a soft spot for Jekyll and Hyde. I do. I've read about it, but then I'm like, I don't understand it. <laughs> it's pretty. I think the music is really good. It, I mean, it really was just like a vehicle for Linda Adder, but um, it's good. I think it's good. I like it. Uh-huh. I mean, I like like Sweeney Todd. You know. Oh yeah, who does like Sweeney Todd? The, like the dark. Which it is, is it is dark, it is dark. You'd, yeah you'd, you'd like it it is dark yeah. it's really dark yeah there's a lot of blood on stage if you like that gothic thing which i do then you would probably like Jekyll and Hyde. Mm, yeah i don't make any money from this by the way everybody i just <laughs> i just, just do, point I do that out Jekyll. there do enjoy some Jekyll and Hyde. oh my god yeah there's oh. one on, uh broadway hd i think it's the david hasselhoff one mm-hmm like one i'm really really upset that i never got to see was like fun home i really wanted to see fun home back in 2014 oh yeah yeah i really the music's really cool from that yeah um 
yeah uh I didn't get to see that either I didn't really get to New York that much I did go yeah for Peter Pan goes wrong in a sea phantom <laughs> before it closed yes. oh, no but like we're never going to get over that I don't think New York is either I mean it was such a staple no for like, so long my friend that my friend Alyssa that lives in New York she always like walks by it and then she like cries because because she could take like on the corner I can see it and she where well, she walks by and she's like the marquee is gone I know it's really sad mm -hmm. it's yeah. like a, it, when that can't afford to stay open I thought man Broadway's in trouble that's exactly where my my mind went. I'm like, if that closes, then yeah, it's really we're it's in a trouble. Real shake up, exactly. It's a real shake up, and uh, I was it, not prepared for how hard it hit. Yeah, well, even when like mean, when Mean Girls closed, and when Dear Evan Hansen, like Dear Evan Hansen has been on Broadway a long time too, and that closed, and I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. I know it's kind of uh, I think well it's been hard post COVID I think for a lot of things to come back or mm -hmm. stay open too and and just in general and the and I know that there's like I don't know how exactly it worked with everyone paying rent to the theaters but yeah yeah hmm. yeah um, crazy well even like now it's still kind of rocky yeah oh yeah yeah absolutely it's it's just the worst time that's why i thought this would be a good time <laughs> it's a great time it's a great time let's do it the theater julian marsh is doing a show it's in variety oh my god that's so funny like this is a great time i mean it sucked right now because broadway is kind of dying but it's, whatever. it's a great time yeah but uh <laughs> yeah it's kind of crazy oh, but that's why we're doing this in los angeles so yay. yeah yeah and maybe someone from new york that came to los angeles to see the show will pick it up bring it to broadway and maybe broadway will be okay <laughs> i think well i think it's gonna broadway's gonna come back in a big way i just think there's like it's still kind of getting over that hump that you can kind of tell so yeah we'll see but i think it's gonna come back well i mean covid well covid like gave everyone like a big hit like it was big hit decimated for, yeah for, for, for broadway like mm -hmm. if you it, can't do in-person things you have a fundamental problem because yeah that's what like, it is right exactly and like no no one was going to like like, like let's be honest like doing broadway over like zoom that's not gonna work no no yeah nobody well it was cool at first i think to do all those like socially distanced things but then it's like mm -hmm. ah, people want to be in a room and they mm -hmm. but they don't because it's scary but you know mm -hmm. luckily i think um it's gonna come back really big um and has been it's just mm -hmm. i think where th certain things were left off it was and then i think also phantom they probably want to revamp the show they probably want to yeah. not have to be having the same deals they have with whatever whoever's estates they have and you know whatever else is going on there that right. we're not privy to but yeah you know yeah and you know it's like yes like it sucked but Broadway was still kind of alive because because p people were like tuning in to like you know they like 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 went like you know how like some shows they kind of did like those like events where they kind of like played their show socially distanced but like oh like you like bought like a live stream because Jagged did this yeah Jagged did, yeah, like, yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah yeah so like yeah. at least theater kind of stayed alive then like but but it wasn't the same it wasn't the same no mm -mm. But, but but we all did what we thought was best because it was a scary time like we didn't know what this oh was. yeah we definitely didn't know what this thing was we didn't know how many like what to expect with with our jobs and yeah say, for sure I, 
I say our job, like I'm an actor. I'm not an actor. I want to be an actor, but I'm not an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but luckily now I think everyone's pretty much back and it's kind of the same old rhythm. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, that's right. I forgot that they were doing like the pro shot um, musicals and stuff. That's also different being an actor uh, because I have been an actor. (laughs) When there's no audience, it's sort of hard to. Well, yeah. I'm excited for the shucked one, the the shucked pro shot coming out. And I'm like so excited for that. Oh, neat. Yeah. I feel like they should have done pro shots from the beginning. Well, I think it's because of the union stuff. They don't, but... Because a lot of people can't come to New York, you know what I mean? Or Los Angeles because it's so far and it's so expensive. So I feel like for people that can't go to those big big cities, like, it's perfect. Yeah, because the, the thing is people will still see it even if they've seen it. On a, in a movie you know they'll they'll still go see it live yeah for sure yeah yeah exactly. so it wouldn't really cut down on any revenue i think it's just because it's so ungodly expensive to film anything with the all the union stuff but um i don't know they did it for hamilton but that kind of came out during covid right didn't hamilton yeah. come out during covid yeah 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 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. It was a time where I was like really, really missing theater, and I was depressed because I'm like, I want to go see theater, but I can't because it's closed. I know, I know. Yeah. And real quick, do you want to hear a really funny story about that too, though? Oh uh, um, yeah. Uh, the day that like my theater closed down because it didn't close down until like a week, week of like a week later after mm-hmm. COVID over after COVID was like announced, and. I already had bought tickets to see Waitress because Waitress was supposed to come to my show. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then it like, and then I was like, well, you know, but, you know, the, our theater's still open. So maybe, maybe they won't cancel the tour yet because we, 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 we don't know what this COVID, COVID stuff is. Like, mm-hmm. you know, fine, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Not even like a couple weeks later, they made an announcement. Miller Auditorium closed until further notice until covid yeah and we're shut down for a while i start to like weep because i'm like you get the waitress i've never seen waitress and i wanted to say it but probably better that you don't get covid <laughs> yeah yeah in retrospect now now that i think about it like it uh, yeah it's tough it's tough it, yeah it did, yeah because nobody knew you know what was gonna happen there was like no cure and nothing yeah. you could take to treat it so yeah you know it's different now when people are less scared and like i now realize that like see waitress and you know live my life and be happy and see waitress or you know essentially probably die from covid <laughs> right right exactly yeah so yeah i mean everything closed down pretty quickly if i remember correctly it seems like so long ago actually now but yeah everything here closed down really quickly um yeah really quickly in fact i had just done something at la opera and we i think i was there february 20th or something they they did some song cycle that i wrote and Mm -hmm. i think it was march 8th or something that my husband went down to the grocery store and he, he came back and he was like white as a sheet and he just said there's there's like a run on everything and there's not stuff mm. there and we're not supposed to leave the house and I said what because <laughs> I don't know I'm always kind of like the news is on but it's kind of in the background so um well like even like when it first started like everyone started to d- double down on toilet paper I'm like yeah <laughs> like, okay <laughs> so um but yeah (laughs) crazy i don't think i think i don't think i had any tickets to anything thankfully in that time period but uh, could be wrong seems like a long time ago that was a bad day for me because like each tear because i i tore them up because like i didn't want anyone to like you know take them out of the car or use them yeah you could frame them yeah, so I tore them up, and, like, I swear to God, each tear, each, like, little rip. It's like, it hurts. I felt my heart 
break. Oh, <laughs> tiny little rip. I'm like, oh, no. oh, this hurts. Oh, this hurts. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> the things we do for theater. I mean, and no, I think I paid like $400 for Phantom tickets when I was in New York and it was closing. I was like, oh, God. But I have to see it again. <laughs> Uh, um, I have um, to say it exactly, and and like I'm going to New York in like 2025 because my oh, nice. so I'm excited to see the uh, like Broadway pr productions. Nice, but I'm also scared because like I hear Broadway tickets are expensive as hell. Well, some are and some aren't. I mean, I got into some stuff pretty cheaply when I was there, but yeah, I mean, Phantom was, well, it was closing, so it was impo like impossible to go for like less than $500, $400, $500 is just crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, this is a business expense. <laughs> oh my God, this is a business expense. I can do this because I could just write it off as a business expense. I was like, row C. Oh my god, so perfect. No, it's not oh. a, I just paid for all of it on my personal thing, but yeah, it was cool. I wish. Oh my god. But yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. Thank Thanks for having so me. Much. This is super fun. I have, I apologize for my low energy. I've been running all day and we had to go over to the theater and um, bring the cast over so they could see the space and all that stuff. So, no, don't worry about it's it. It's a long day. Oh my gosh. So, for and so for anyone that's tuning in, the Allison Wonderland musical uh, uh, it, it it premieres on a April sixth and seventh in the in Los Angeles at the Wilshire Elb Theater. Yeah, the Wilshire Elb Theater. Our our website is AllisonWonderland dot show, so mm -hmm. not dot com, not slash anything. AllisonWonderland dot show. Um, and you can get tickets it's saturday the 6th of april at 6 30 uh, 7 30 p.m and sunday the 7th of april at 2 p.m it's a really big theater it's over 1200 seats so please come see it we have an led wall we have a cast of trained professionals they're all amazing we have all costumes made for the show and sets and props made for the show it's gonna be really cool So, and I will leave a link down below in this in the, the description for anyone who wants to buy tickets. And I really encourage you to go see it. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um. So, with that being said, we are off, and we will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.